is that? What the fuck is that? Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Redman. What's good, boss? Damn near 25 years in the game, TV, movies, yes. music, and now he's expanding, getting into the app game, huh? Absolutely. Blaze now. Blaze now. We got new wings from the Nuggets spot. A little bit smaller wings, but some more sauce. So this will be an interesting episode. Okay. You ready to get it going? Ready to get it going. All right, so the first one, Sriracha. That's no big deal, right? The Hard Knock Life Tour, it's sacred to a lot of hip hop fans, you know? You, DMX, Jay-Z, Method Man, Ja Rule, all on tour together. Mm -hmm. When you look back at that time, what do you take away? You know, I was just thinking about that tour the other day. That was the biggest and best tour that ever really went out. The tour lasted for like three months and a half. We went to every major city there was. We party in every major city there was. And it got fucking nuts on that tour. You know, when you have A-list guys at the top of their game, does it get competitive with the stage show night to night? When we came out, you know, sometimes we'd be performing and the niggas still be stacking chairs right there in front of us and shit. We'd be like, yo, we gotta put up with this shit. But it was still an audience. And about time we did our routine, at the end, our routine was to be hooked up to these cores, these harness. Went flying through the air. And flying through the air. So about time we flew through the air, the place was packed. Motherfuckers was like, okay, we, we know we headlining, but we gotta beat these flying motherfuckers. So we had Key and Peel on here. I seen Key and Peel. Big up to Key and Peel. You watched the episode. Mm -hmm. And did you see the impression that Keegan did of Method Man? Yeah, I seen it. My babies, I mean, they helped raise my kids. So they go to the mathematics and everything. That's some stupid shit. I gotta make a phone call. It's interesting to think about rap dads, you know, to think about rappers having everyday dad issues. Mm -hmm. And you're a rap dad yourself. Absolutely. And when you go to like the ballet classes or you drop your son off at MMA, like do you find that the coaches, the other young dads, are they, notes, huh? <laughs> do they <laughs> talk to you like Reggie or do they think of you as Red Man? <laughs> Good fucking question. Some that feel that they're heavily uh, educated in the hip hop game. Uh, they know who Wu-Tang is. They they know to call me Reggie besides Redman. Some people might show their cockiness and do that. Like, yeah, hey, Reggie, I know you, yeah, I'm up with you. And then there's Redman, like, hey, Redman. And, you know, white people say Redman. And <laughs> black people, they say Redman and shit. And then white people go, Redman. I like that respect, too. That means that they know. They be like, Redman? Like, yeah, Redman. Little hot, right? Yeah. That one has a kick. That one has it, and it, go, it get higher from here? Yeah. Shit. So, for the next one, you have some amazing Throwback Thursdays, but Throwback Thursdays are always without context, so I'm, so I'm hoping I can show you some from your Instagram, and you can tell me what the hell's going on. Yeah, absolutely. First one. This one looks like you and a couple Jersey legends right here. You and Bon Jovi. Ryan Bon Jovi. And that was us, I guess, the feeling of us being in a very comfortable environment, talking to each other from different points of views of music and genres of music. You know, he does, you know, what he does, I does what I do in hip hop, but we still connecting and vibing and still spreading the, the energy. I, that's what that picture tells me. I see the same that thing. We love Jersey and we love what we do. Next one, this looks like a rock and jock game and it's legendary. Oh yeah. Ray? KC, Method Man, Snoop, you. MTV used to have rock and jocks. There's, those are the best. Where are they? They need to bring those back. That's number Where one the on my fuck list. Are these, where are these events? That was a good time in hip hop. Look, Dr. Dre. In a jersey playing softball. With KC, KC was huge. <laughs> and JoJo was humongous with Jodeci back in them day. But they here, because they knew Hey, MTV Rock and Jock brought out positivity. It brought out artists to do something for a cause. Kids can see all of us together and show that this hip hop and R&B community, it can work for them. Make them want to be an R&B artist. Make them want to go be a rapper. That's just another picture of a good time in hip hop that don't happen no more. Were these games as much fun to play in as they looked like they it were was, on TV? It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Number three, this is legendary. Oh. Red Man, 50, Eminem, mm -hmm. with his favorite artist. Mm -hmm. On some real shit, cause I'm kinda know my shit a little bit. 50 Cent was like one of the last made ingredients of 
kind of our era, I would say. 50 was the last of the Mohicans that had our DNA in them. And that was when Eminem was promoting 52. Right. So I was watching all that in the making kind of uh, 50 uh, success. And I was right there, bottom, right there. And this is right when that plane started to get off the runway. And that's when hip hop started going there. <laughs> You know what? That wasn't as hot as the last one. So here's the thing about hot sauces. Some of them are taste good at first, and then they hit you later. And some of them just are like a little bit nastier and a little bit tougher and have like kind of a barb okay. in a way that other ones don't. So first off. Okay, that. See, a little yeah. late, little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shit. Can't have a Red Man interview without asking you about how high. Ooh, how high cool. too? You once said 2017. We still on track for that, you think? Yo, fucking how high too was just, it's just pol politics, man. Like, first of all, when we shot how high one, uh, we was under budget. We spent like, what, maybe like 15 to do it, maybe? And that shit made over 100 mil, you do the math. Hopefully we could start shooting in 2017. So this one's actually our hot sauce. It's the Hot Ones hot sauce. Homeboy's hot sauces, Heatonist, mm -hmm. and I us. got some at home. It's a collab. I got some at home. You have some at home? Yeah, yeah. They sent me some. Come on, yeah, yeah. Red man, what do you think? Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Very good. That's good. Thank you, Red. One of the best ones I tasted so far. Mm, put some. Oh, in. there you go. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you and Method Man, you've been all over the world. Yes. And to have a buddy in tow like that, I think you can provide a unique perspective to my next question. Mm -hmm. Which international city would you recommend for a bachelor party? It'd either be Bulgaria, Croatia, because the Croatia beaches, oh my God. The Croatia beaches is ridiculous. And they got bitches out there. Women, they got women out there. All right, stop it. Yeah, this that kind of just hot for me. For no reason. Mm -hmm. Red man, no sips of water yet or anything. <sighs> Fucking badass. If I go through this without no water, I'll be the man? The fucking man. I don't think you'll be able to do it, but you would be the fucking man. You produced a couple Shaq records, right? Yeah, I did. I make more cash in the residence. Try to make a residence. Shaq is a man and that's evident. Shaq was actually dope. <laughs> right. right. Like he was dope. Now, you know, not saying that in a bad way, Shaq, you know you're my dude, but compared to basketball players, Shaq took that shit serious. And yes, he had the money to pay everybody to be on his album and to do beats, but he would not let nobody write. That Shaq would go in and write his own shit. And he was nice. Shaq got a gold album. Right. And he's got records with big. Like yes, he's not he got <laughs> I got, he got a couple of gold albums. Shaq got gold albums. More than some of these rappers do. We always felt funny about an athlete turning rapper. Right. But he broke the grounds on it. And he was from Newark. He's from Jersey. He showed what it was to be dedicated and to step out the box. Like, he not only did rap, this nigga did a... He was a state trooper, <laughs> Shaq. Like, so when he became a state trooper, that showed me what kind of man Shaq is. He liked to, he liked to set his mind to something and get the shit done. All right, so this next one is pain 100%. People always claim to have hilarious stories when they're under the influence. Nine out of 10 of those times, they're always stupid stories. But you actually have brilliant ones. Is it true that you were once cattle prodded while performing and didn't even know it? Mm -hmm. It's my early stages in my career, I think around my second album. I was wildin'. I was doing hell a lot of drugs around there too, and I, I had took some acid that night. Some good acid. Got on stage and was rocking. I mean rocking. And usually when I take the acid, when I know it, when I know it start working, I start getting a little tingly feeling, start feeling a little chilly, a little cold. So I started getting that feeling. I was like, oh shit, we wanna turn this bitch up. And uh, I rocked the show, shut the building down. And at the end of the show, I jumped in the audience, which is rocking with the audience. Yeah, I was just hyped, you know. And the whole time, I'm sweating up a storm because I'm, I'm just feeling this, I'm thinking it's the 
the, t the acid I took, I was like, this shit is some shit. Because every time I was jumping up and down with the audience, I would freeze and be like, oh, shit. And I just kept doing it. I didn't know. I was like, oh, shit. I started feeling my heart and shit. My nose was sweating and shit. I was like. And I felt it again. I was like, god damn. I told my cousin, whoever I was with, this fucking acid is kicking my ass. And come to find out, this nigga had a cattle frog <laughs> in the audience wearing motherfuckers out in there with it. I guess he was hitting like eight or nine people at one time and we all connected and we just, oh shit. He just in there like, mm, man. And I'm just in there getting shocked and I'm thinking it's the acid. So I'm taking it. Yeah, that's like no big deal. I'm not trying to fall out on the ground, be shaking from a shock. I'm like, I'm, I gotta man up. I gotta control my high. Get through these rocky Yeah, bars. I gotta get through this shit. I can't let nobody see me fall on the ground shaking, but it was at that point. I guess I couldn't take it. Somebody seen it and somebody pointed him out. Look at this nigga with this big ass catapult in there. <laughs> I guess he was saying I was shocking niggas all night in that motherfucker, so. Yeah, it was true. Shock my hair right out my goddamn mustache. And not shit without having flames coming out your ass with this goddamn sauce here. So I know you came up under the uh, tutelage a little bit of Diesel Don. And he's like one of those original rap chef guys. Yes. And there's this big New Jersey debate right now, right? Whether it's called a Taylor ham or whether you call it a pork roll. Are you aware of this debate? I didn't even hear what you said just now. How you feeling, Red? Looking at that water. It might be a, an oasis. Yeah, there I you go. To, There's no to. shame. There's no shame. What, they got gasoline in that one? Ooh. That was almost career changing. In what sense? I don't know. It just made me think about my whole life. Like, how am I rapping? Well, how, did, how am I making money for rap? How am I making money being up here? I'm making eating things. Like what went wrong in your life that you ended yeah, up on my yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, just, oh, God damn. Mm, 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 God damn. So this one's crazy. Wow. Which industry has the slimier executives? Hollywood or the record industry? What was that again? What did you say? Which industry has the slimier executives? In Hollywood or in the music industry? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? The worst, right? It's horrible. So bad. You don't even have a taste. No, it just tastes like 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 um, somebody gave you a metal pole that's on fire, and then you just put it in your mouth for like no reason. Oh my god, that is some bullshit there. Oh god. Oh lord. Go back to your question. I could take this like a man. Respect it. A fucking uh. Slimier executives, you know music what? industry or the movie industry? I say both. In the music industry, you can see it coming. All right, a little bit. You can see when you about to get fucked, as I would say. In the movie industry, they let you get your glory going first. Yo, yeah, well, we in the building, then they say you're fucked. Cause you just don't know until it's yeah, too late. Yeah, you just don't know until it's too late. They be like, you're fucked. Oh, wow. I just bought me a house and a car and stuff like that. And I'm already fucked already? Yes, you're fucked. Oh, I knew I should have took my ass to church this Sunday. What do you mean, dab it? I like watch. Do a little, but you gotta be careful because this shit'll drip. So I just do just like one little fresh drop on it on the shit. You don't have to if you don't want to. I don't I don't like to pressure Fuck people. Fuck that on I'm my a show. G. We doing this shit today. Oh man. We doing this. You can't get cocky when you're that close to the edge. I ain't gonna get cocky. Bah. All right, this is mega death sauce with liquid rage. Be careful. 
So I'm just gonna spit the question because it's not easy to ask and it's, it's gonna be harder for you to answer. But the worst, <clears throat> the worst, right? So I know you smoked with a lot of crazy characters from the movies to music to just being a fun guy that people like to be around. Who is the number one smoke buddy in your phone? Your number one guy. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my number one smoke buddy, uh, Josh. He's my engineer. He appreciates the culture of marijuana. Like, we can sit there and just talk about weed and how a backward roll all day in the studio while we work. We just talk about weed. And we be laughing our ass off. That's good to have someone you can smoke with that can laugh at dumb shit. And meth, too. Like, but me and meth, when we home, we got the family, we got our families, we be moving. So uh, when we get together, when we on the road, on the tour, when we smoking, we be hilarious. Salute. Red man, you made it through. You uh, cleared the plate. Yes. The floor is yours. 30 seconds, I know you're a busy guy. Let the people know what you got going on in your life. Okay, cool. Um, we want everybody to tune in the Red and Meth app. It's called Blaze Now. You can find the hottest dispensary around the country on our app, you can tell the ratings of that dispensary, the kind of weed, and the, the owner, everything about that dispensary you can find about Blaze Now. Download it to your phone right now. And you can find me on IG, Redman Giller, R-E-D-M-A-N-G-I-L-L-A, G-I-L-L-A, Redman Giller on IG, and at the real Redman on Twitter. And my website, www.redmansworld.com. Root. I cut. Seen that?